I write these words to speak on the matter before I listen. I am excited and nervous to hit play on the album because I have not been excited for music in so long. The last new full album I listened to was Guts, and before that, I don't know, over a year or two ago? Thank you for watching. Right there? Right here? And we'll put one of these on. I miss my era's era. What a sentence to utter from one's own mouth. I have been extremely eager to do another Taylor Swift video, but maybe this moment here, this album was the best thing to wait for. For some background, I truly became a Taylor Swift fan a week before the Eras Tour concert film came out. From October 6th to the 13th, I tried my hardest to train for this massive event. I was drawn to the concert film because it was a huge deal. It was a big thing for the fans. It was part of the culture. I mean, the numbers don't lie, and I had foreseen the impact that this thing was going to have. If anyone is familiar with her as an artist, you know she pulls numbers out the ass, and I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to experience the communal feeling, the good energy, the fun music. At this point in my life, I'm not really doing much in terms of escapism, whether it's fucking traveling or, you know, fun stuff. But this was easily attainable. Listen to her music, Buy your ticket and attend the show. Taylor Swift had become, Taylor Swift had become, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, what the fuck? Taylor Swift had become my third top artist of the year. I screenshotted this on November 30th, so Spotify <coughs> only had seven weeks of listening data, but she flew that freaking high regardless. And here we are, six months later. I get to experience the new album and I've been stalk I was stalking Reddit to see what people were feeling and were saying and oh my god the anticipation was buzzing. People were counting down the minutes to when that album was releasing. <laughs> Today I hope to create a video of some quality. So let's talk about the tortured the tortured poets department and how I feel about it from a disconnected from the fan base fan. Hope you enjoy. I was supposed to be I smiled a few seconds into Fortnite. This is exactly what I wanted it to be. Sometimes it takes me a few days to write a video if my thoughts aren't free flowing. At this point of writing, it's the Monday after and I'm currently listening to the album for the fifth time. And I need to mention the five listens because I'm truly at a loss of words for how to talk about the album. I guess I'll begin by saying that I have several artists where I don't mind listening to their catalog. That might sound like a bad start to the conversation, but hear me out. What I'm referencing is if this artist comes onto the shuffle, I don't mind listening to them. Oh, it's Taylor, leave her on. I love some Michael Jackson, let him rock. I think the Tortured Poets Department as an album starts off pretty great. I was hooked. The freaking composition, instrumentation, whatever you wanna call it is absolutely graceful. It's beautiful. A perfect start to this album of personal thoughts and development. Post Malone may not be adding the most, but he definitely uplifts the track. I'm not a die-hard fan of his, but I like the guy and happy to see such a collaboration. This song, Song 2 Off The Bat, solidified that this was everything I wanted it to be. I got emotional writing these words. You better believe that opening back-to-back -back with Pleasant To My Ears songs heightened my experience. My expectations were met. The chorus is my favorite part with that You're not Dylan Thomas Just an instant save. I love her sound. I don't know how to pinpoint it besides smooth. She's perfected it. She got me with a 3 for 3. Now looking back, these three songs follow a similar calm, relaxed tone. Nothing too skeptical at first listen as you're sitting there with wide eyes soaking it all in. But the sound of the album is something I want to discuss for an intermission later on. I don't know if I was crazy, but dude, this whole album is very mellow. But I actually love that and it seems very fitting. More on that later. I wasn't the biggest fan of Down Bad, but let's leave an asterisk on this song for later. So long, One minute, 12 seconds made me smile. Such a sweet ballad. Yo, I love every part of the song where she sings lyrics like the part I just played. And that's the beauty of an album. You're going to witness so many ups and downs, standouts, and turnoffs. 
I'll admit that I saved more songs on this album than I didn't, but I still have some points to talk about. I'll open the floor up to some conversation at the halfway point, which is in three more songs. I forget how the West was won. I forget if this was This song gives me the strong communal feeling. And what I mean by that is I feel the energy of the fan base from that night of the concert film. A friend of mine asked me what I thought about the song and I straight up told them that this song would hit so well at a concert with the big crowd and everyone singing the song. I feel strongly about that communal crowd concert feeling and that feeling, that thought, opinion has solidified the more times I listen to the song. Yo, I'm not even lying. Listening to this song back while I was writing made me even more hype and enjoy the chorus even more. <laughs> I'm sorry if one of these songs are your favorites, but it did nothing for me. I think it's very important to revisit work as time goes on. Down Bad being a prime example of that. I wrote this video, this video very, very scattered since the release of it. I did listen to the album five times within the first week, but that was almost a month and a half ago. <laughs> and in that gap of time, I have found a pleasantry in Down Bad. I will say though, without fail and very assuredly, that I'm disappointed this album leans heavily towards a similar vibe. Now, creatively speaking, I'm not mad at all because there's a specific sound being achieved here. There's a concept being executed and fulfilled. And I personally, personally respect the hell out of that. I have 45 Taylor Swift songs saved on Spotify right now and Tortured Poets Department accounts for 24.4% of that. So amongst my hand-picked favorites from the Eras Tour set list, I now have this batch of mellow songs. A thing I've noticed is that on these last two albums, there is almost no instrumental piece, musical motif, or riff that you can sing that sticks in your head. While the vocal melodies and the lyrics are as beautiful and catchy as always. Oh my god. The instrumentals fail to get stuck in your head like earlier music from her catalog. All of us can sing the main riff to White Horse, instantly recognize the groovy layered guitars of Willow, or beatbox the drum beat to shake it off. But try singing the main instrumental riff of Willow from Midnight's or any... Another song that made me happy. And it made me take a moment to soak in the fact that I was listening to this album for the first time. Re-listens and years will pass, but man, the first time experience is so, so, so singular, you don't get it back. These title card statements were ones I wrote listening to the album on that April 18th midnight, so we're about a month and a half removed. I want to make a point about the first listen versus the repeat ones. On my second and third re-listens, I needed a break halfway in. The IV drip into my system was too chill. The tortured poets department has a copious amount of similar sounds and that's not to dunk on it, cause even looking back, I think this album, considering the concept and the cover she created through the variants, is a pretty cool one to be my first. The who's who of who's that is poor no comment. Another double whammy, but fortunately, although there are a lot of soft instrumentals here, we can mix things up with an... Instant save. This song is so beautiful. We'll make an excellent drive song. A song to turn to for sadness. As I get older, I'm finding myself less and less sad. That's not to say I don't feel negative emotions, but I think that has to do with not putting myself in situations where I feel such destruction and turmoil from within. But while I do love it and can still jam to it with headphones and feel the song, I know certain parts of my life where this track would have been amazing. Reminded me of Bejeweled when the chorus transitioned in. Such a fun song. I Can Do It With A Broken Heart is indubitably the banger of the album and the perfect yang to the yin of L-O-M-L. -L. Or Lommel? How are we saying it? I don't go back and manually play every saved song off this album, but I can tell you that this one gets repeated every now and then. Let's get that chorus wind up real quick. I find it absolutely whimsical that it's a fun song describing pain, but that pain isn't overshadowing her perseverance. 
Was any of it true? No comment. How many times can I smile during this album? Well, one last time for the awesome riff. Clara Bow is my most streamed song off this album. To this day, June 3rd, it is my go-to track off Tortured Poets. It still fits the theme of the album, has a sexy ass riff, riffing the whole time with a catchy template line repeated three times that reels me into the song each time. I think part of what brings me back to this song is that it's reliable. It was an instant save and it sticks out to me being the last track. You always need a strong ending. And that's it. This truly is the first Taylor Swift album I fully heard. Ended at 10 out of 16 saves for the first listen. Either way, it's a memorable album for being my first one and for the way it made me feel on that midnight. At the beginning, I called myself a disconnected from the fan base fan. And that's because while I was on Reddit, I saw a lot of conversation around Jack Antonoff and Aaron Dressner a few days before the album came out. And besides my assumption of the fan base enjoying either producer's style more than the other, I don't know what the lore is. Or actually the discourse was that people made uh, assumptions about the songs based on who produced it because the producers have certain styles and they were like, oh my God, it's gonna be a sappy song. Oh my God, it's gonna be a club fucking beat. <laughs> and while I'm doing voiceover, I wanna share some accomplishments that the album had within the first few freaking days of streaming. Taylor Swift becomes the first artist in history to have seven albums debut with over 1 million US copies sold in Nielsen history. Taylor Swift's The Tortured Poets Department has broken the all-time record for biggest single-day streams for an album in Spotify history. She passed her own record from Midnight's. Taylor Swift now holds the 10 biggest single-day streaming peaks in US ch Spotify chart history. That's insane. <laughs> Taylor Swift officially breaks her own record for biggest streaming day for any artist in Spotify history, with 380 million listens across her catalog on April 19th. No other artist has reached 200 million. Taylor Swift and Post Malone's Fortnite breaks the record for biggest single day streams for a song in Spotify history, surpassing Adele's Easy On Me. Taylor Swift now holds the top three biggest album debuts for any artist in Spotify history. Jesus Christ. Taylor Swift's The Tortured Poets Department has hit 1 billion streams globally in just three days and is now the fastest album to surpass 1 billion streams in Spotify history. And this graphic here just reiterates some of the facts I just read in which they are claiming she does the impossible after just 72 hours, which is pretty impressive because she keeps breaking her own goddamn records. What the fuck? What a time to be alive, boys and girls. Look how this one person celebrated the album release. Where was the freaking invite at? <laughs> it's a pretty cool uh, little thing they did. That's it for me, my friends. Protect your energy. Check this out. Love what you like. My friend got this for me for my birthday because I say this at the end of all my videos. It's my outro tagline, essentially. It's absolutely phenomenal, and I'll see you soon. Oh yeah, I have one last fun fact. Taylor Swift's I Can Do It With A Broken Heart becomes the fastest non-single to surpass 100 million streams in Spotify history. What did I say about that being the banger of the freaking album, man? Come on, man. See you later. I'm so depressed I